Hi and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to convert from standard form to factored form when we're looking at quadratic functions. So here we're starting with something in standard form. So it might look like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we want to write this in factored form. So that's f of x equals a times x minus r times x minus s. So there's two methods we're going to talk through here. The first method is to factor by hand. So you can factor other ways, but I'm talking about just sort of looking at it and seeing how it could be factored. Then the other method is to rewrite it in factored form using the quadratic formula. So we'll go over what the quadratic formula is, but this is the second method. So I like to start with method one, try to factor it by hand. If I can't figure it out, then I will rewrite it using the quadratic formula. So you may have seen the quadratic formula before, but let me remind us of what it is. So the quadratic formula tells us that the solutions to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, these solutions are given by the following. So the x values that make this equation true are x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the plus or minus gives us two solutions. So we do the plus as one solution, and then we do the minus as the other solution. So this statement, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, the two solutions to it are given by this equation. So when we think about this in terms of a function and its graph, these are actually just the horizontal intercepts of our function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. These are the specific input values for x that we input to the function to get an output of zero, which is exactly what a horizontal intercept is. So we can take this idea and apply it to our functions. So if we have a function written in factored form, like a times x minus r times x minus s, then the r and the s values are given by this quadratic formula. So they're given by negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And again, the plus is one solution and the minus is the other solution. So we can use this formula to find r and find s and then put them back in our form. So we would then substitute them into a times x minus r times x minus s. Okay, so let's go through some examples of this using both of our methods. So first, let's convert the function f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 10 into factored form. Our first method is to factor this by hand. So this means we're going to look at x squared plus 3x minus 10 and figure out how to factor it into two terms, x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something. So I'm not going to go through sort of the how or process for how you do this. There's multiple different ways of teaching it and I'll provide some links to other videos where teachers have explained this, but we'll go through one example here. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10, but add to three. So for us, I'm thinking that multiplying to negative 10 is some combination of five and two, where one of them is negative. And I'm seeing that if we have a positive five and then minus two, that gets us a positive three. So five minus two is positive three, and this will work. So this factors to x plus five times x minus two. Remember when you're factoring, you can always double check by going backward. So I can distribute everything out and make sure I'm getting what I started with. So I do x times x, that's x squared, minus two x plus five x minus 10. Then the negative 2x and the positive 5x would simplify to 3x, and I get back to where I started, x squared plus 3x minus 10. So this is a correct factoring, and we adequately factored the function. So the solution for factored form would be f of x equals x plus 5 times x minus 2. Okay, so this is how I would factor this by hand. But if you're ever working on one of these and you get stuck, you really just don't know how to factor it, you can always use quadratic formula. So let's walk through that now. If we start with x squared plus 3x minus 10, I'm just going to identify my a, b, and c for the formula. So a is 1 because we have 1x squared, b is 3, 
and C is negative 10. So our horizontal intercepts R and S are equal to the following, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And now I just need to substitute in each of the values and simplify. So truthfully, you could type this all into a calculator by substituting the values, but since I know this works out nicely, I'm going to do it by hand to show you how that works. So our B value is three, so I have negative three, then plus or minus the square root of three squared minus four times one times negative 10, all over two times one. So I've just substituted in the appropriate values, and now we need to simplify. So I have negative three on the outside, plus or minus the square root, I have nine plus 40. So three squared is nine, and then negative four times one times negative 10 is a positive 40. Then in the denominator, I just have two times one, which is two. All right, I'm going to now combine the nine and the 40. So I have negative three plus or minus the square root of 49 all over two. And the square root of 49 is seven. So I have negative three plus or minus seven all over two. All right, so for me, when I get to this point, I like to then split this up into the plus version and the minus version. So I have negative three plus seven over two, and I have negative three minus seven over two. Then I just simplify each of these. So negative three plus seven is four, and then we have four over two. Four divided by two is two. Then I do negative three minus seven, which is negative 10. That's divided by two. Negative 10 divided by two is negative five. So I have my two values. Let's say R is equal to two, S is equal to negative five, and our A value is one from before. And with this, I can write this in my factored form. So my function is f of x equals, I have one for the a, so it's just sort of invisible there. And then it's multiplied by x minus two times x minus negative five. So that minus two is the minus r, and the minus and negative five is the minus s. And then I just simplify the minus a negative. So my final answer is f of x equals x minus two times x plus five, which is the same thing we got when we factored it by hand, but we could just use the quadratic formula if that was not working out. Okay, so there are so many examples we could do with this. I just wanna show you one more in this video. There are lots of other videos with factoring quadratic equations or factoring quadratic functions. Okay, so for this one, let's convert g of x equals 4x squared minus 14x plus six into factored form. So I like to start with method one where I attempt to factor this by hand. Let's try that out. So starting with 4x squared minus 14x plus six, the first thing I want to do is factor out the four. So my reasoning here is that my goal is to write this in a times x minus r times x minus s form, with that a being the leading coefficient sort of factored out of everything. So I'm going to factor the four out of everything so that I have it in the correct location. In doing so, I divide each of the terms by four. So I'm sort of like anti-multiplying is how I think about it. I'm undoing a multiplication, taking it on the outside. And then in order to do that, I'm dividing. So I have four times the quantity four over four X squared minus 14 over four X plus six over four. So I've just taken each of those and divided them by four. Then I simplify. I have four times the quantity X squared minus seven over two X plus three over two. So I've just simplified each of those fractions. All right, so now we're in something that looks like a number, that value four, being multiplied by a quadratic. And this is what I could then factor into two parts. So we would ultimately have this looking like four times something times something else. However, with these fractions, I don't really know how to factor this into two pieces. I think if I thought hard enough about it, I could probably come up with two numbers that multiply together to be three over two that add to negative seven over two. And depending on your skill level or your proficiency with this type of problem, you might be able to do this by hand and already come up with the answer. But I know for me, when I see this, I get pretty intimidated and I often just immediately jump to quadratic formula. 
So my suggestion is to use quadratic formula whenever factoring gets too hard and go forward with it. So let's do that now. Okay, so for method two, we're going to use quadratic formula. I'm starting with my function 4x squared minus 14x plus 6, and I need to identify my a, b, and c values for the formula. So a is 4, b is negative 14, and c is 6. Now I take each of these and substitute them into my formula. My formula tells me that my horizontal intercepts r and s are equal to the following. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now when I substitute in my a, b, and c values, I'm getting negative a negative 14 plus or minus the square root of negative 14 squared minus 4 times 4 times 6. And then this is all over 2 times 4. So I've just taken a, b, and c and very carefully substituted them into this equation. Now we need to simplify. I'm going to do this by hand, but at any point you could put this into a calculator. I personally like to try to get an exact answer or a fraction if I can, but you do what is best for you. So first I'm seeing a negative, a negative 14 is just positive 14. Then I have 196, that's negative 14 squared. And then I have minus 96, that's four times four times six. So I actually did use a calculator for this part. I didn't know 14 squared, I had to type that in the calculator. Then this is all over eight. So now I see that 196 minus 96 is 100. So I'm left with 14 plus or minus the square root of 100 over eight. Then the square root of 100 is nice, it's just 10. So I have 14 plus or minus 10 all over eight. At this point, I like to write this as two separate expressions. So I have 14 plus 10 over eight and 14 minus 10 over eight. 14 plus 10 is 24, so I have 24 over eight, and 24 divided by eight is three. Then for 14 minus 10, that's four. So I have four over eight, which simplifies to one half. So my two values here are three and one half. Let's let r equal three, s equals one half, and then let's remember that a equals four. Now I have everything I need to put this into factored form. So I can say that g of x is equal to four times x minus three times x minus one half, and this is in factored form. So after all of that, these numbers really weren't too complicated, but I know for me, this was an easier way to get the right answer than spending too long trying to puzzle out which numbers go where. So just by using quadratic formula, we don't have to try to factor by hand, and it gets us the correct answer. Lastly, I just want to show you the graph really quick. So at any point, you could always just graph the function in a graphing utility, and for me, that's Desmos. So if I put 4x squared minus 14x plus 6 into Desmos, I see pretty clearly here the horizontal intercepts. So it's 0.5, which is our 1 half, and 3. So from there, I could just write the formula. So 4 times x minus 0.5 times x minus 3. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.